nations are Spain, Greece, and southern France. All are being overwhelmed by desperate immigrants trying to escape numbing cold. The refugees leave behind millions of cars. Even vehicles running on cooking oil are abandoned. Now that it's cold, their oil is thick and sludgy. It clogs the fuel lines and engines, making them useless. No people, no fuel, no food. Northern cities become quiet islands of concrete and glass, surrounded by ice and snow. Most people head south, but some flee further north. Two cans of slices. They stockpile non-perishable food to get them through the cold weather. But they're limited to what little they could carry. They resort to hunting and trapping food to survive. An adult male needs about 210,000 calories to get through the winter. And this winter is going to be a long one. It's a famine worse than the mid-1980s when a million died. Experts believe the death toll could reach 20 million. The government has announced the emergency oil reserves have fallen to less than 250 million barrels. Two of the four installations are... It's one year since the end of oil. The U.S. is increasingly isolated. West Coast ports that used to move nearly two million tons of material a day are now eerily silent. From Russia to Japan, ports are closed. Docks are empty. International trade is virtually over. Brand new cars will never be driven. The world's military is defenseless against the oil crisis. The US Department of Defense used to spend nearly $180 billion a year on oil, making it the country's single largest consumer of fuel. Now, its tanks and planes sit empty. They're simply too expensive to run. Emergency vehicles take priority. They now use simple conversion systems to run on ethanol to keep life-saving services up and running. Plants grow slowly, and the demand for fuel grows quicker by the day. It's leading to tough decisions. The U.S. has turned a record 40% of its corn crop into ethanol. But more corn in the gas tank means less corn at the kitchen table. and the nation is hungry. And ethanol isn't making much of a dent. Not everyone's back on the road. Fewer cars are a blessing for some. Before, hundreds of millions of animals were killed on highways. Now, populations of moose, deer, even frogs explode.
But farm animals aren't so lucky. Farms no longer get deliveries of feed. Farmyards are abandoned. Hundreds of millions of cows, pigs, and chickens die. The hands of time seem to slowly move backwards. As factory farms collapse, many people return to a simpler way of life. They're left with no choice but to eat what they can grow. Global food production is now increasingly local. Farms spring up in empty city lots. In suburbs, families plant whatever they can. A Category 5 hurricane has devastated Miami. Thousands are feared dead. When Katrina smashed into New Orleans in 2005, the cleanup continued for years. But in Miami, there's no fuel to rebuild. Without oil, there's no bouncing back from disaster. The influenza outbreak continues to rip through America. Los Angeles, Miami, Houston, all are still struggling. Quarantine zones are being created. The Center for Disease Control say the death toll may be as high as 200,000. I think this is good. It's Caleb. Anyone? Hospitals are in high demand, but nearly impossible to reach. Come on, Ian. Some people have saved gasoline for an emergency trip like this. But there's a bump in the road. Hoarding gasoline doesn't work. The chemicals that once kept it fresh now degrade the gasoline. After a year, this fuel goes bad. What's going on? A world that was once so closely connected is falling apart. The price of lithium, needed for thousands of electric batteries, has soared again, as much as 300 percent. The abdication of the Saudi royal family is a shock. Immigration unrest in Spain and Portugal. In New York has declared a state of emergency to deal with a chronic food. It's a migration that's never been. It's been 10 years since the world's supply of oil disappeared. Even out in space, things are changing. The oil that once sent rockets into orbit is too precious to waste. Almost 200 satellites, the backbone of our international communication systems, are becoming space junk. But back on Earth, one person's trash is another person's treasure. In a world without oil, discarded electronics are now a valuable commodity. Hey, Dad, look what I found. Hey, look, look, cell phone. A ton of used cell phones contains almost 10 ounces of gold, nearly 300 pounds of copper, and over six pounds of silver, vital materials in a world where trade has stopped. Hey, Dad, I think there's some gold in that. Oh, yeah. And it's not just electronics. Plastic takes hundreds of years to disappear. Bottles and containers once carelessly tossed out, are being recovered and reused. People are recycling in ways small and large. Container vessels are being harvested. 
90% of a ship can be recycled, mostly for steel, a cheap raw material for building. But not all ships are being torn apart. Hundreds of boats are running on biodiesel. This ship is carrying the first delivery of lithium to North America. The lithium comes from Bolivia, where it's mined from the country's salt flats by the ton. Lithium is the main ingredient in the most efficient electric batteries, and the world is hungry for electric alternatives. Bolivia's industry is booming. On a planet without oil, Bolivia is a superpower, the Saudi Arabia of the New World Order. But there still isn't enough biofuel to completely restore world trade. But there's hope in algae. Algae can be processed into oil and produce 30 times more energy per acre than other biofuels. It's completely renewable and requires very little fertilizer. 10 years after oil, 10 billion gallons of biofuel made from algae are in use. But that's still not enough biofuel to get us back in the air. Commercial flying for cargo and for passengers is still way too expensive. 34 million passengers used to come through this airport every year. Now, it's silent. Other transportation is filling the void left behind. Nearly two million cargo trucks are back on the road.